Hello everybody, McLovin News. So, in my YouTube video, it has gotten probably the most uh, general reactions because YouTube is more about that general all-around worldwide view. And I don't just go for attention and views, remember that. Now, the video that is getting the most attention views right now is that one that you guys have also seen on TikTok. And, and I'm aware of that, I'm completely aware. It's a big, gigantic attention grabber in the short bit of seconds. But remember something, my video is not just about challenging only the two-party system it's about we the people must not divide each other. We must end division and welcome independent unity of open thinking. Now, I've seen some comments that say, you know, like we're, you know, they're the government in America or just general, most governments, they're against the general freedom and speaking on behalf of like the founding fathers. But listen to me, I'm no expert of the founding fathers. Nobody is, unless you're maybe a historian or a librarian. And even then, you can't speak for them. Those people are no longer alive. But you got to remember something, an important message from the founding fathers based on the principles of the actions that just like the thing I'm about to say, actions speak louder than words, them creating that constitution, our Bill of Rights, our liberties and our freedoms and the veterans who have died for this country. All those people in this country have not yet had the mantle of America and the independent voices and the independent parties and the mind collectiveness for all the kids, all the generations. That is what has been missing. I really do feel that technology, innovation, the biggest drive for capitalism, money. All those benefits have gone toward teaching us to be for what has been the innovators who have led us in our past. And those are the cause and effect realities, not taking lines from the matrix, literally, but think about this, because I know that line came from the matrix, okay? Look, the reality is, it's really the cause and effect, all right? Again, not from the matrix, specifically. It's the fact that everything relates to us. Everything that somebody leaves behind, everything that we do to each other, every person that does one impact to another, and the ripple effect of how that comes back around, there is an impact that is felt. And in the comments that I felt out of the 456 uh, views from three hours ago, my titled uh, most viewed video so far as of recently, it may even get bigger views than anything else I've ever done. McLevin News, the two-party system, we, must, we, we the people must not divide and division. Welcome independent unity. There's a reason for that. It's not about dividing against the Democrats and the Republicans. It's not about, about labeling anybody. Labeling is the old party system. Uh, demon, dehumanizing, uh, dehu, de, well, basically mistreating and poorly handling situations is how most people have handled things when they usually are afraid of something as the ideals go. People that are afraid of something usually uh, basically will often be afraid of something because they don't understand it or things as this phrase, as a statement goes, if you don't understand something, it often creates fear. Well, the function of reality is that's just ignorance at its best, and ignorance is not bliss. And there is a reality behind that, that ignorance is not bliss. It limits educational openness, open free thinking, and shared collectivity. And that's the important take you guys need to remember. I'm not anti-government. I'm not anti-America. I'm not anti-people's voices. I support every person's voice. And we need to share our collective minds more than just battling back and forth over what we think is best. We need to try to put our ideas together. And a lot of the comments that I've gotten so far have come out of positivity. I'm not going to say anything's negative, but speaking on behalf that government is anti-freedom, that's not America's government. America's government has been bought out by capitalism and oligarchs. We the people have the power still to make a difference, make a change. And you, can, you can't deny that capitalism owns this country, that the rich and the powerful have used capitalists for their own gains. But so can we. We can choose to let our hearts, our souls, and our bodies, our minds, our spirits be sold out to capitalism, to do only for the, our own gains, to make ourselves wealthy, make ourselves famous. Plenty of enough people have done it, but we can't hate on them. They're still human beings. They're still people. I've seen so many comments against famous people because they're famous. They're wealthy. They're rich. They've made a legacy. They've created music. They've created song. They've sung their points. They've done what they want to do. You don't just suddenly get rich and become a singer. You have a talent. You give that talent. You give it back. That's a part of relating and sharing and connecting. That's a beautiful element right there. And the music and the songs, I'll say for the moment here, by one of the greatest UK singers of our time that's talking about his current death would be Elton John. Now, I tell you right now, go check out Elton John's music. Look at all his music. Listen to songs that have never even made it on the radio that you maybe didn't even know he sung. You will find a song that will touch you, that will emotionally hit you. And Mr. Elton John is not worrying about himself dying, literally, but worried about missing out on valuable moments because he doesn't even feel like he's all of himself. This is not just about Elton John. Elton John is a man now who is even talked about the facts that he's down to his last meal eating nothing more than an apple and a melon and a slice that's less than that of what even a prisoner gets or equal to what a prisoner gets in jail. And Elton John is not a man who's asking for pity, pity me and pity, pity this. He's talking about empathy. His message is empathy. Empathy is accountability tied together, but accountability goes so much bigger. 
Empathy is what anybody can feel if you feel the pain of another, if you can relate to another. If you've ever felt that when somebody didn't think of you, they didn't care about you and they spoke to you in a certain way or rhetoric and talked about you. Same thing with the outcome of this election where everybody felt like, hey, this didn't go the way I wanted. I can't agree with everybody. I only think of Trump because I now compare everybody who vote for Trump as an enemy of America or anti-American. That's not the case. You cannot de- you cannot dehumanize, as it's best put, or monstrously, monstrously label people who voted for Trump and compare them all in the same group. That's that's wrong. That's what the two-party system's been doing throughout this entire election. And I didn't vote for Trump. I voted for Kamala. And I realize I'm a hip, I'm I can be considered a hypocrite for voting for her because many people would call her people who represent the oligarchs, the rich, the powerful, the fear mongering. Which I've even recently called out that I'm aware that the Democrats do this. They they raise up hope. They raise up you know, fear, they go back and they double down on what the right does when the right attacks some of the rhetoric about the freedom and the liberty and smaller government. But you got to admit, majority of Republicans and Democrats, and as a whole, in the core, the ones who uphold our government, even the ones who we don't like to see and view, even the current ones right now, they have their time in history to make that legacy. And we have our right to challenge them and uphold to proceed to get better leadership, get her better candidates. And currently, even right now in the Donald Trump administration, I'm proud of the fact that Matt Gates was forced to step down by his own decision because he's not a, he's not a reputable Congress member. I wish Marjorie Taylor Greene would step down. I wish I wish you know a lot of them, Chuck Schumer and and Nancy Pelosi. I wish Mitch McConnell would consider stepping down. He's old. He needs to pass on his ideals to others. How about uh, Mitt Romney steps down? How about Lindsey Graham steps down? Lin- Lindsey Graham's a shifty guy. Okay, just just a fact. Just a little take from me. <laughs> I mean, he's a shifty character. He's been known. He's proven himself to be shifty. Uh, um, you know, Mitch McConnell has been labeled the Moscow Mitch. He's even got a song about him on the Internet. But we got to think about the reality of what we're doing as Americans every day. The important takeaway is that we need to lead better leadership for our kids. That's the educational take on this for our children. That's the open mind of thinking. You wonder why libertarians and independent freedom people have not been able to be a part of the of the de- democratic unity between Republicans and Democrats. It's the fact that Republicans and Democrats have probably agreed on one thing. The greatest threat to their party is an independent free thinker that empowers people just like you. And you know what's interesting? I'm not working against the Democrat or Republican Party, even if I am inspiring you guys to make up your own minds. You know what I'm standing for? That the independent party is the core foundation of what people should aspire to be, to have a leader that can represent that party who also can turn and say, I represent and respect values are on the Democrat side. And I also respect values on the Republican side. Why didn't I start with Republicans first? It's because Republicans have been pushing too much of the hate rhetoric in their candidacy. They've been twisting the Second Amendment with the NRA, which is quite honestly a bought out, corrupt, you could call it corrupt, biased, completely biased corporation. You don't need to buy a gun to be with the NRA. I own a gun. I didn't listen to the NRA. I didn't join the membership. I don't even wear the t-shirts for the NRA because, you know, or I should say this majority of my shirts that I bought that are NRA did come off, some of them did come off the NRA website, but of those of which I did not go and buy new ones because I knew the money was going toward their company and their corporation. I'm not against the Second Amendment right, but you don't need to be with the NRA to prove that you have the right to carry, that you value the Second Amendment. The NRA just rides the Second Amendment right in their sales pitch messaging just to get gun sales. That's a fact. They literally ride the Second Amendment and entice people's fears and antagonize people's fears over the party system of the Democrats taking their guns. And the Democrats have never taken anybody's guns that I'm aware of. You find me source information, I will back that up. I will hold them accountable. That's what I'm talking about here. Anybody's accountable at this point. Donald Trump's accountable. MAGA's accountable. That's the takeaway. If MAGA has a cult infiltration, as I've claimed, and that there's a true insurrection that is actually going on, which I was the first one to say it. I don't know if I really was, but at least on my channel, in my life, in my awakening of realizing that this is a bigger thing than all of us, I think that we need to hold the full MAGA party accountable. I don't think it's a negative. I don't think it works against the interest. But if there's something that they have to bring to the table, let's hear what they've got to say. Let's not polarize and hate and divide because that's the problem of both party system. And right now, the rhetoric coming out of both parties isn't any better. The Democrats have not uh, proven over here that they are going to take a silent notation to this. They're having to relearn and rework themselves and learn what went wrong. You know, went wrong. And that's a fact. Now, as for the Republicans... They, I don't even know if they're aware of what hampering basket has been opened at this point, because now it's the open discussion that maybe we should be looking to a third party system, but maybe a more right wing conservative group. No, maybe a strictly only right side. No, we don't need that from the left. And we certainly don't need that rhetoric coming from the left, uh, the left or right. I'm clarifying that once more again, we don't need any more of that coming from the right, which has been doing that predominantly heavily and or double downing hope building and disappointing that the Democrats have been doing. And I'm not 
I don't hate Democrats. I do not hate Republicans. I do not hate anybody unless they are, well, no, actually, no. No, even the worst criminal offenses, child predators, molesters, murderers, killers. You know, I can't waste my time with hate on people like that because I don't know them. But if they hurt somebody else, if they affected a child, I have a different level of responsibility. It's called accountability. Full, uphold them to the full justice of the law that's applicable. And if the laws do not meet the requirements, then there needs to be investigation of how to stiffen those laws and make them more stricter. Because to discourage people from harming our children, spreading misinformation, and I'm not talking about people who have the First Amendment right to speak their thoughts. I'm talking about people who spread misinformation to hurt the good integrity of the good people fighting for this country. Because there are a lot of good people fighting for this country. And don't begin to tell me that the right wing doesn't attack that good sources and the Democrats don't attack that sources. Maybe the Democrats don't do the majority of it. Maybe they're doing the opposite side of not doing enough. My point is, we have to talk about this. We're not. I'm not working against a two-party system. I'm saying that our founding fathers wanted us to have a two-party system. Sorry, not four-party system. Two-party system. <laughs> correcting myself okay i'm italian i use my hands what can i say you know it's it's really about the core principle of what matters but between what we leave for our kids and our generations to come because they're the ones that hold us accountable history holds us accountable and accountability is the highest paramount reason for what is standing behind this great country so i'm going to put the same title of this on there and i'm going to say a follow-up to that this is the deeper discussion because i've seen the comments and I welcome that freedom of thinking. Your First Amendment right is to share that. And honestly, I'm saying this goes even bigger than just here in America. If there are people who have left this country, the great great America, and they've ran away and they want to come back here because we shouldn't disown them and hate them, you know? It's a service to stay here and to fight. But even if somebody leaves and they want to live in another country and get a different experience, that's on them. But we shouldn't hate on them. We shouldn't divide them. We shouldn't cast them out. They were born here. No matter where they go, they're still Americans. It's like saying our troops went over to fight a war we don't agree with. Let's just abandon them. So what if a fellow citizen who's not a soldier goes over, we're just going to abandon them? If they're a comedian or a famous person or they just left and they had their own biased opinion, we're just going to abandon them? No. America is the fundamental core of what great leadership is. But we are not perfect. We have our own flaws. We have our own history. But I'm proud to be a part of America because of that flawed history. I'm proud to say that I'm not claiming because I'm Caucasian, I have some special privilege to speak. No, because of white privilege. No, if anybody wants to call me out on that, okay, fine. But you know what I can do to challenge that? That I'm fighting for the kids. I'm fighting for everybody, regardless of color and nationality and ethnicity. I don't look at a person based on the color of their skin. I look at the content of their character. And you better never forget that because the title of this video is gonna be called we do not judge on the content of a person's color of skin. It's on the content of their character and it's on their accountability. And that's a fact because this is going to be a follow-up to my title video, McLovin News, the two-party system. We, the people, must not divide and division. Welcome independent unity. And that is my take for today. McLovin News, thanks for watching. That's all I've got to say. I welcome open discussion. Please, let's keep this a part of unity. Thank you for watching.